So this is our Cummins inline diesel. It's a 5.9 liter turbocharged intercooled fuel injected diesel engine. Um, just wanted to point out a few things associated with this engine. Um, first of all, this engine is connected to a dynamometer. This is a very old Clayton dynamometer. Um, it's a water brake dynamometer. And in a separate video, we'll be discussing dynamometers. Um, this is turbocharged. So um, you can see here's the exhaust side of the engine. The exhaust actually comes through an exhaust gas turbine, um, which is connected via a shaft to the inlet air compressor. So the exhaust spins the turbine that provides power to compress the air. Now, of course, compressing air increases its temperature um, and that lowers its density. So we want to increase the density back up so we can maximize our power. Um, so the compressed air is now going to go into this, which is our intercooler. Um, the compressed air moves through um, cooling water from the building's cooling water system is going to cool that air down. And then the cooled air is going to come into the engine on the other side here through the air intake. Okay. Um, what we can also see on this side is the cooling system. Um, this right here is a marine heat exchanger. If this diesel engine were used on a yacht, then you wouldn't have this hooked up to a radiator like on our Chevy V8. It would be hooked up to a water to water heat exchanger, which again is what we use here, right? So the engine coolant circulates into the engine and the water from our building water supply circulates to the other side of the heat exchanger. And that's how we provide cooling for this particular engine. Now, as we move over to this side, um, just a couple things to show. Um, first, I would note that this is our fuel tank right here. It's actually a racing fuel tank. Um, the inside is actually uh, like a giant sponge um, so that, you know, in the racing world, uh, you wouldn't have that fuel like sloshing around as you flow through corners or as you move through corners and all that. Um, this engine also has a methanol water injection system. Um, so you can put methanol water through here and through the red tubing and through a small pump, you can actually inject water um, or methanol into the engine, um, which will then give it another power boost. Now, we have never used it. Um, I'm always a little bit skeptical about generating too much power, especially since we've got a 60 year old dynamometer that's dissipating that power. So perhaps in the future, we'll be able to utilize that. Um, another thing to note is that it is fully fuel injected. So the fuel comes out, um, it's going to go through the fuel injection pump, you know, through some filters and the fuel is going to get fuel injected through these tubes into each of the engine cylinders. And then last thing to note is that this is a diesel engine. Technically it does not need electricity to operate, although certainly it does to operate the injector pumps and all that. Um, but it does have a kill switch. So right here, if that's pushed in, then that's in the kill position and it cuts off all electricity and basically the fuel injectors stop and the engine shuts down. Um, of course, we're going to keep that out when we run our particular experiment. Um, and then lastly, just as we're about to move inside, you know, here's our water brake dynamometer. Uh, a separate video is going to describe this particular dynamometer. Um, but nonetheless, in this particular case, um, we're going to control the water flow through um, valves. Um, there's a solenoid right down in here. So there's a solenoid operated valve. Um, there's another one below on the other side. Um, one of them is the in inlet valve. The other one is the outlet valve. So if we want to increase the load, we'll open up the inlet valve to get more water in. And of course, the power to the solenoids are our, our little buttons that are inside the lab on the console that we'll see here shortly. And then one last thing to note, is that this particular dyno actually generates its own power um, so that it can operate its load cell and its tachometer. So right here on the front is a little belt and right next to it is a little generator. Um, so that's going to provide for, you know, power to run the most basic of the instruments. So now we're going to go inside and look at actually how to operate this particular engine. So now we're going to look at the operations of our Cummins diesel engine. Um, first, keep in mind that you will have already used the hydrometer to find the specific gravity of the diesel fuel. Um, we've already made sure that our cooling water system is on outside 
And of course, our lab technician is checked to make sure that the engine has coolant and oil and all of that. So we're, we're ready to go. Um, so first, we just need to turn on the power supply. <coughs> um, so we just turn this key, just one click, um, just into the run position. And that's going to provide um, power to some of the instruments. Um, but then we also have to flip this switch here, which is going to provide power for the rest of the instruments. So now we've got our power supply. Um, what we also want to do is make sure that we've pulled the engine kill switch that we looked at outside. So that was demonstrated for you that that's already been done. Um, if we're actually, if you guys are actually here running this experiment, then I would recommend that one of you go outside and at least look and make sure that you can actually hear the fuel pump spinning, which you should be able to do now. Um, <clears throat> let's also make sure that we've got no load on the dynamometer. Now, frankly, the dyno does have a small leak in it, so it's very unlikely having had this engine just sitting here for a while um, that there's any load on it. But just to be safe, let's push the unload button. So this is actually engaging the solenoid operated valve on the exit from the dynamometer. So we'll just hold this for about 20 seconds just to make sure that we don't have any water that's inside the dyno. Um, we also want to make sure that the throttle is in its idle position. So here we're just going to unlock it by pushing the button and make sure it's pulled out forward all the way. Um, and then let's also make sure that, that little blue arrow up here in the top is pointing straight up. All right, so I'm convinced it's unloaded. The throttle's in the right position. Another thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to push the heater button. Now, diesel engines will have to operate even when it's cold out. And, you know, if we're up somewhere in the northern part of this country and the temperatures drop below zero, once you start injecting diesel fuel in, the engine may be so cold it's still not going to ignite, right? Um, so even though we're going to compress it, if the engine cylinder is cold, we might not get a high enough temperature for combustion. So we'll just push the heater button here for about 20, min 20 minutes, about 20 seconds or so, and just make sure that, you know, the inside of the engine cylinder is warmed up. Now, we're in Southern California, it's in the 70s outside, um, probably don't even need to do this today, but just as a matter of course, I'm going to go ahead and do it anyway. Okay, and then we are ready to actually start the engine. So like any other engine, um, at least it operates with a key, um, we're just gonna move it to the start position and hopefully it'll start up right away. All right, so it started up right away. Um, we can see that the speed has come up to its idle, which will be somewhere around 800 RPM, although right now it's just a little over 700. Um, and just due to friction in the system, we are gonna generate a certain amount of power um, now, both the speed and the power have high and low ranges. Um, we're typically going to start them on low. Um, now, the power um, may or may not get above 150 horsepower. If it does, we'll just have to switch this to high. And of course, the speed, same thing. If we go above 2,000 RPM, which we likely will, then we're going to have to switch that from low to high. Um, for right now, we'll just leave them in the low position. Um, let's also note that there's other instruments. Here's our fuel flow rate. So that's where we're going to measure the fuel flow. Um, this is the fuel level in the fuel tank. Apparently that's disconnected. I know there's fuel because our lab tech filled it up and the engine wouldn't be running if there was no fuel. Um, then it's also giving me the temperature in the exhaust line. Pre-turbo is the exhaust temperature going into the exhaust gas turbine. And post-turbo, after it's given up most of its energy, is going to be the temperature that leaves out through the exhaust. So those are there. And then it also gives me the intake temperature. Um, so it gives me a variety of data. Um, now, much of this data we don't need, um, at least for our experiments, but it's a good thing to note. Um, we'll also note that um, the engine coolant temperature is here, the oil pressure is here. Um, the dynamometer, uh, this is actually a, a dynamometer pressure. Um, the water supply to the dynamometer, especially at high load, is not enough to overcome the pressure within the dynamometer. So there's a small booster pump. So every time we push the load valve, um, we're going to see a few pounds of pressure on the water line. And that's just going to be our clue that the engine is actually loading up properly. Now, I'm not going to push it right now. Um, we're just idling. Now, again, we've run this engine earlier today, so it should be appropriately warmed up. <coughs> so I don't really need to worry about letting it sit for the full five minutes. But, you know, of course, you guys will when you're running this particular experiment. Um, let's also keep in mind that we do want to keep our eye on some of the temperatures. Um, the coolant temperature should never be allowed to go above 
Um, well, it says about 240 degrees on the lab manual, um, but you know, I probably wouldn't let it get much above the boiling point of water. Although it's got uh, ethylene glycol water mixture, so the boiling point is certainly higher than 212 Fahrenheit. Uh, but still, let's not let the water temperature get up too high. If it does, we'll just put it back to idle. And then we also want to keep an eye on the turbo temperature. You know, if the exhaust gas turbine gets much above maybe 1400, 1500 degrees Fahrenheit for too long of a period of time, um, it can actually overheat the lube oil, um, vaporizing the oil, basically, you know, eliminating lubrication and causing the turbocharger to fail. So we are going to keep an eye on that particular temperature. Now, we'll probably not achieve that high temperature today. Now, you can go over that temperature for a brief period of time, but just not more than perhaps a couple of minutes. Um, I might note that in the lab manual, it says try not to let that temperature get above 1250. Um, still, you can get a little bit higher for brief periods of time. So now we're actually ready to begin here. And I'm actually going to bring the throttle up um, towards its um, you know, full throttle, really about three quarters throttle setting. Um, now, this is rather unique. Unlike um, some of our other engines where it's just a handle, um, here we actually have a knob that turns. And um, we'll actually turn this clockwise to increase the throttle position. So, you know, make sure that it's not locked. So just make sure this is not locked. Just turn it kind of clockwise a little bit so it's free to turn. And then we're going to begin by rotating this. And we'll have to re rotate it about three and a half turns. Usually after about two and a quarter turns, you'll see the speed start to increase. So that's about where we are now. Speed starting to increase. And then we'll bring it up to about three and a half turns. Okay. Um, so now I just want to make sure that it's loading properly. I'm going to push the load button. And at the same time, let's just make sure we're getting a little bit of pressure in the dyno. Which we do. All right, and that's all it's going to be. It's only going to be about five pounds of pressure, but that's enough to give us a little bit of load. So we know that that's working properly. Um, so now we're going to move it all the way up to five turns, and that's going to correspond to about three fourths throttle setting. And that's going to be our first throttle setting where we're going to start taking our data. So there's four turns. Now, at about four and a quarter, we're already up to 2,000. So we are going to have to move the speed from low to high. And then we're going to keep spinning this until it's up to about five turns. And that should bring us up to a speed of something around 2,600 RPM, 2,800 RPM, something like that. Um, now, it's not quite there. We're only at about 2,400. Um, you can run the experiment at this point, or you can give it a little more throttle if you'd like to and see if we can get it up to 2600. Um, sometimes the throttle is not really adjusted well, and it might not actually go up to 2600. But yeah, we're, we're getting up there. So it looks like today we have to turn it to about six turns or thereabouts. But nonetheless, once we get it to the point where we're at about 2600 RPM, but this is going to be our first operating point. So it doesn't have much load on it. I mean, just that minimal amount of load we gave it initially when I preloaded it. But this is our first operating point. So you're going to record the power, you're going to record the speed, and then you're going to record the fuel flow rate. <coughs> and once these are recorded, um, then the next thing is to move it to the next setting. Now, you can see that our temperature is actually already beginning to climb. So I'm just going to go through this demonstration rather briefly. Um, perhaps we're going to have to do some maintenance on the water system. Um, probably I have the throttle set a little bit higher than I should. In fact, I really do. It's already creeping up to about almost 2,700. So maybe I'll bring the throttle down to five turns. And that'll be really more in line with where we want to be for this experiment. And I mean, you might even notice almost immediately the temperature drops. It was over 1300. Now it's below 1250 and it's continuing to drop. So, you know, that's a good place to be. In fact, my speed is still a little high. So this would be a good point to start the experiment. Temperature's reasonable. Um, the speed is reasonable. Throttle setting is reasonable. So this is my first data point. I record my three data points. 
And now we move on, right? Remember, keep the throttle at this setting. We're running two tests, one at about three quarters throttle, and then one at about half throttle. So we'll adjust that shortly. So we've taken our first set of data, and now we're gonna load the engine. And as we load the engine, um, we're going to increase, I'm sorry, we're gonna decrease the speed in about 150 RPM increments. <coughs> so right now it's actually at about, looks like about 2,700 or so. So that's my first data point. Let's load it up a little. It'll drop down. You see, I only have to push it briefly I actually overshot it a little bit. Now I'm down to about 2,500. So I'll just briefly unload it a little bit. See if we can get it back up to about 2,600 RPM. There we go, or at least it's close enough. So here's your second data point. Fuel flow, speed, power. And then we'll load it up a little bit more. So let's bring it down. So you can see what's happening here. As I load it, um, the speed's gonna drop. Now here I wanna let you in on a secret. It's not really a secret, it's a problem. Um, we do have a leak in this dynamometer. There's a leak in the seal. Uh, we've replaced it once, um, oh, probably 20 years ago or so, and now it seems like that leak is back. So what you're gonna have to do in order to maintain a constant speed and a constant load is you may have to periodically just kind of push the load button. All you're really doing is you're trying to make up for the water that's being lost to the leak. So right now I'm trying to be at about 2,400 RPM. Um, you can see that it only sits there briefly and it starts to creep up. So just give it a little push. Um, and we'll just try to keep it right at 2,400 RPM. Generally this experiment is done in groups. So while one person is trying to figure out how frequently and how long to hold the button, somebody else is actually then recording the power and the fuel flow rate, right? But nonetheless, um, it's a little bit of an inconvenience, but that's what we have to do. So we record another data set. And now let me drop the load, I'm sorry, increase the load. And drop the speed down a little bit more. Okay, now I'm... Hmm. Now for some reason, we're really not getting that booster pump to kick in properly. Well, I'm not sure exactly what's going on, but nonetheless, I think you get the point, right? Um, for some reason, that booster pump must have seized up again. Well, nonetheless, at least we saw a couple of data points. Um, what we would do, obviously, is we just keep increasing the load. As we increase the load, the speed and the fuel flow rate are going to change. And we just keep doing this until the engine is fully loaded and we drop down to a speed of about 1400 RPM. Um, once we've done that in our appropriate increments, then we're going to do it again. We're gonna reduce the throttle. So let me just do that. Let me unload it completely. Um, in fact, you know what? I see that on the engine, uh, the water, the coolant is overflowing. So I'm just gonna bring it back to idle and let's just say that this is good enough for our demonstration. Um, to shut the system down, we're just going to pull the throttle all the way out. Um, we'll push the unload to make sure it's completely unloaded. Um, and now I'm just going to stop the engine. Um, we'll just turn this back to the off position. So I would not say that this has been the best demonstration, seeing as that our engine is overheated and for some reason our dyno was unable to load um, past some initial point. But nonetheless, I think you get the point of the experiment. It's pretty straightforward. Um, you will be provided, of course, with data from um, a operating engine. And that's what you use for your own lab experiments. So there's your diesel engine experiment.